gone in 60 seconds? Only if the thieves are taking their time. I'd say you're at extreme risk parking in this parking lot. Catalytic converter thefts are rattling drivers across Colorado. The public needs to know about it. Frustrated, embarrassed, and on the hook for expensive repairs, drivers turn to Denver 7 Investigates Tony Kovaleski to rattle some cages. One week's worth of paycheck in my hand in 10 seconds. He's taking you inside the ugly side of a booming criminal enterprise. It's insight from an informed salvage yard employee. How much is that worth? About 650 bucks. Our data review shows it's happened in Denver and Boulder nearly 4,000 times in the past two years. Do you get why this is such a popular crime? Yes. Easy money, very fast. We will show you exactly how fast a little later. Let's begin in Boulder, where data we uncovered takes us to this RTD park and ride. It's a feeling of rage. It's a feeling of rage. It happened to Bill Enyart. It's just got to be stopped. I just got in and started it up, and it was so loud. It was deafening and embarrassing. It also happened to Holly Winton. They both parked in RTD's Table Mesa parking lot. And they are not alone. This data obtained by Denver 7 shows thieves walked away with 88 catalytic converters from this location alone during the past 12 months. I just think this whole thing needs to be escalated. Not enough's being done. Public needs to know about it. Both victims wanted to know how it happens. Take a look and watch our stopwatch. We're not showing you anything the thieves don't already know. This demonstration at a local salvage yard shows how quickly a catalytic converter can become a cash commodity. How long do you think that took? About an easy 10 seconds. He was close, officially. Our stopwatch shows 14 seconds from the start of the first cut until the catalytic converter fell to the ground. There's a lot of thefts out of that parking garage. We shared the numbers with Boulder Police Commander Tom Trujillo. Data clearly showing this parking garage has become a prime target for thieves. Is it frustrating to see these numbers? It is because they keep going up. People want to know, have you made any arrests? We have not. After your review of these numbers, do you wish RTD would do more? I think it's collaboration with us and RTD, and I think RTD has a part of this. We also crunch data in Denver. During the past 14 months, the four most popular hotspots for catalytic converter thieves were the RTD Park and Ride at 40th in Colorado, the Central Park RTD Park and Ride on East Smith Road, the RTD Park and Ride near the airport at 61st and Pena, and the data also exposes multiple parking lots at DIA. All four locations have significant theft numbers, and based on that data, bad guys like parking lots where people leave their cars for extended periods of time. Are you surprised that our data found your park and rides are hot spots for these crooks? Am I surprised? Uh, you know what? I, that's, a, that's a tough question. We also shared the numbers with RTD's acting police chief. Now that we know that certain areas are, are exhibiting you know, more of those type of criminal incidents, now we know to redeploy our resources. Our investigation has uncovered a couple critical issues. First, we learned RTD is not tracking police reports and thefts at its park and ride stations, including the 88 at its Boulder facility. Did you know there were nearly 100 catalytic converter thefts at that location? Those numbers I did not know. And second, we find this fact telling. Currently in the Boulder Table Mesa park and ride, RTD has 27 cameras in place. They're inside the elevators and outside the elevators, but not a single camera monitors the cars on the multiple floors of the parking garage. As we walk through here, there are no cameras monitoring these cars. What does that say to you? Well, I actually made the assumption that there were cameras, so it's a huge surprise to me that there aren't any. Some of the victims are asking the question, why are there not cameras in there? That I would defer to RTD. Victims we talked to want to know why you don't have cameras on every floor. What's the answer? That is a question I, I apologize I'm not able to answer now. 
A sign as you enter clearly says RTD is not responsible for theft or damage, right but above, victims were surprised to learn the amount of risk they bought by parking in this structure. A crime of convenience, a location where crooks can access cars with no video accountability. From your perspective, does RTD need to do something here? If they want to put cameras in, that's something they can do. That's our suggestion to them. RTD needs to own it, take responsibility, and take action. RTD's acting police chief says he will now meet with his video team to explore options of adding cameras to the Table Mesa park and ride in Boulder. We will follow up. And finally, in coming weeks, our investigation will continue as we track down where the stolen catalytic converters are getting sold and how current laws allow it to happen. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski. And our investigative team spent months digging into the data. Here's a sample of what we found. Since January 2020, nearly 3,600 catalytic converter thefts have been reported in Denver. Vehicles made by Honda had it worse. Toyota and Ford followed. Now, the most popular model among thieves, the Honda Element. It was hit 539 times in Denver alone. The Prius was second, Honda CRV third. And now our digital team has been nearly as busy as our investigative unit. And if you live in Denver, you can head right now to the denverchannel.com and find out if catalytic converters have been stolen in your neighborhood. We promise there are stories in this newscast that don't involve catalytic converters. But before we go on, we need to stress that thieves often come in twos. Take Jacqueline Garrick, for example. Her husband stepped out of their Jeffco home to find someone sawing the catalytic converter off their car. Think you had the drop on him? Well, think again. That was not the case. There was another man watching and waiting with a gun, and he was ready to use it. The guy pulled out a gun, aimed it at my husband, said, let the guy go. My husband said no. He, he said, you know, you just need to leave, and he then pointed the gun at my husband's head and fired. Luckily, it missed. Well, on our advice, if you see something, say something, but to the police, not to the person with the gun. Boulder police say a person found dead on Pearl Street this morning had traumatic injuries. The investigation is early, but foul play is suspected. Few other details tonight are known. Boulder County will begin debris removal mid-April, and they expect to finish within four months. By then, it will have been more than half a year since the Marshall Fire sparked. Now, first in line for cleanup, the El Dorado neighborhood in Louisville, Sagamore and Original Town in Superior, and Marshall in unincorporated Boulder County. Each of those properties is expected to take about four days. Now, some people, though, will not be waiting on the county. They described waiting on contracts to be finalized and a lawsuit to be dismissed as excruciating and chose instead to take matters into their own hands. I knew it was going to take way too long. And so I jumped on it right away and, um, and hired a private contractor because I want to get rebuilt before my insurance money runs out. Nearly 800 property owners have opted in for debris removal, and that is expected to cost around $60 million. And the same people behind a lawsuit that blames Xcel Energy for starting the Marshall Fire will also claim that a failure to contain underground coal mine fires was a factor. Xcel has repeatedly said it's found no evidence its equipment had anything to do with starting the Marshall Fire. Boulder County Sheriff's Office has not announced a cause. A small group gathered in Green Valley Ranch today protesting dozens of foreclosures initiated by an HOA. More than 50 families say they are in danger of losing their homes because of unpaid, fi unpaid fines to the Master Homeowners Association of Green Valley Ranch. Though today's protests may not look like much, the outrage is extensive. A city councilwoman has stepped in to assist homeowners, and some of the people out waving signs today aren't, are not even in foreclosure. They just do not like what's happening to their neighbors. I want them to stop. There's no reason for people to lose their homes over oil stains or, or weeds or dumb stuff. And that's what's happening to these people, and their fines have accumulated to outrageous amounts. Now, in a statement, the HOA told us it has sent multiple written notifications about the unpaid fines alongside offers of payment plans and a fine reduction policy. When Russia first invaded Ukraine, the rest of the world felt powerless. That has quickly changed. And people from all over are volunteering their time and their money to help. And this weekend, you can join them. Here's CB Cotton. 
That's just kind of the street that we lived on. A place. Just so gorgeous how the mountains and the sea me and language was it such in Suha? connect these two women and now so does the call to help i have to help my country and i really try to do that tanya luchak is an exchange student from ukraine and masha mislovskaya is also ukrainian but moved to the states when she was three years old i met tanya through um, a ukrainians in denver facebook group and together they found a way to give back to their home country as the Russian invasion continues in Ukraine, thousands of miles away in Denver, people can do their part. On Sunday morning, a 5K benefiting the Ukrainian army and Ukrainian nonprofits will be held at Sloan's Lake. So we should be kind to each other and um, help each other in difficult situations. The latest from the United Nations estimates that just over 1,100 Ukrainians have died since the start of the invasion. My great grandmother, who recently passed away this past year, and my grandfather, um, two different sides of the family, but um, they're both Holocaust survivors. And seeing these photos and seeing the atrocities that are happening, everyone who's on social media right now to be able to open up their phones and see those same photos, it should be a shock. It should be a shock that this is happening. War is happening in Ukraine, and these women are connected in their call to help. Every person who is here, who is in a safe country, should be really grateful for that. CB Cotton, Denver 7. So the race is Sunday, Sloan's Lake Park. Tickets are $35 for adults, 20 for children. And we posted a link for you with all the information on the DenverChannel.com. From Insta. I really picked it up and ran with it. To overnight success. Food Network started picking up on this. A Westminster woman's baking becomes her big break. We're in a good spot heading into the weekend in between the cold fronts, but I'll let you know when this one brings the next chance for rain and snow.